How's it going, everybody? Welcome to RacerXOnline.com. Thank you for joining us. We have a special garage build here today. You're looking at a 2001 YZ250. And what's so special about it is this bike has been, uh, I guess, getting passed down from generation to generation. Uh, a gentleman named George Posca, uh, this was his machine. He passed away. And instead of just getting rid of it, his son Johnny decided, you know what? I want to keep it inside the family. Uh, he got his buddy Jay Clark here to rebuild it. So uh, once I kind of heard that, that's near and dear to my heart, is trying to keep a bike um, in the family from generation to generation. I know a little bit about that. I have one of my dad's Triumphs at home, and uh, it's one of the first bikes he has purchased, so that's going to stay with me. I'm going to pass that down to my son, Aiden. So I thought, you know, why not break this 2001 YZ250 down with Jay and uh, give you some reasons why he used certain parts on this build. Now, usually in our garage builds, we go ride the bikes, but since... It's a special occasion, and I don't want to roach this bike out in the mud here at Glen Helen Raceway. I thought me and Jay would just, I guess, basically use a little bit of a tech talk and reasons why we use the companies that we did here in this build. So, Jay, I'm going to hand you the mic, and I'm going to let you just scour this motorcycle and tell the people about it. Yeah. All right. Hey, so thank you, and this has been a really fun project with my buddy Donnie and I. Uh, we've been working on this thing for about six months. He's taking it out to Texas where Johnny lives this next week, and so we want to get it out there to him. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have good enough weather to ride this thing. But uh, as you can see, when you're revving this thing up, it's pretty fun. Smells good and all that. But these, this bike was pretty rough. The good thing was everything was there and not roached. One of the problems when I fixed these old 20-year-old bikes, this one's 21 years old. Uh, and so one of the biggest problems we come, come across is things are just ruined, like the cylinder, the forks is a big one because those are really expensive. We run into that with other builds is the forks can be ruined and might not be externally, but internally they can be messed up and guys don't realize that. So you want to so you want to make sure if you're going to do a build like this that you start with a bike that has all the components there and everything looks pretty good. Um, before the last couple of years with all this stuff going on, you could find a bike like this roached out for under a thousand dollars. And nowadays they're two to 2,500 for a kind of a good core, which can make the math really difficult to work when you're gonna put four or five grand into one, it can be tough to make it work. Cause you're gonna spend a thousand dollars on suspension typically on that part alone. And so it adds up really quickly. So one of the things I like to do so when we get started is we strip the entire bike down to the frame and we want to inspect the frame first that it doesn't need any work, any extra work, and then we'll get it sandblasted. We have a great uh, uh, powder coater in, in San Diego, San Diego Powder Coating. They sandblast it and then powder coat the frame and they block everything off so that all the electrical can connect right back up. They block off so that the, the engine goes right in. You don't have to file any of the powder coat off. And that's what's really nice. Uh, the way they block everything off, it makes it really good. Yeah, so real quick, I want to add to that. So sometimes when you do get a frame powder coat, I remember this back when I was, I had a 2001 YZ250. I had one powder coated, and it was really tough to get the bolts back in, and the, the engine wouldn't sit right. So in these tabs, they're all ready to go. You can just slip it right in, no problems. Exactly. San Diego Powder Coating, they're, they're moto guys at heart. That's not their main business. They do it more, the painting the frames is more of a hobby for them. Chris Johnson uh, raced quite a bit. His dad, Phil, has been a great guy for years. I met him almost 30 years ago at Washougal, and they, they're great people. And so they know to tape everything off and plug all the holes so you don't have any of those types of problems. So it's really nice. Um, so we do that with the, with the engine, and then the suspension will get straight away to our suspension shop. In this case, we use Racetech, who went through everything, and luckily we were able to use all the components that were there and just, you know, valved it and uh, revalved it for us and, and for, for Johnny. So that's, that's been really good. And then with the engine, we vapor blast the engine cases and, and the cylinder. We do that while the engine's together and it makes it a lot easier. Now, a lot of guys will ask you, can you vapor blast an engine that's together and then go run it? And the answer is no. Okay, I mean, we get that a lot. Guys want to clean up their engine. You will get, no matter what, you, you think you block everything off, and we've, we've taken engines apart with everything blocked off, and there's still that, that grit, that media gets in there, and that'll grind up your engine. So you do not want to do that. So if you're going to vapor blast an engine, you have to split it, take it apart, clean everything, and that's what we did here. And we got a fresh crank in here. We got our uh, Wiseco piston, of course. We got all of our components in here, all rebuilt, and the cylinder wasn't damaged. We were able to reuse the, the stock cylinder. We didn't do any modifications. We could have sent it off to, you know, got, got an engine work done, but we went ahead and just go, hey, we're just going to keep it stock and simple. 
got a moto tester, a reed cage on here. And then same thing with the carburetor, we went ahead and got that fully cleaned up. Got a, Pro-X has a rebuild kit for that. And, and my buddy Brad at Parapros, good buddy of mine's helped me for uh, many years. Um, he, he's the one that helped rebuild the engine and um, the carburetor. And then we use spec bolt. When you do these old bikes, all the hardware shot. You know, you can save all the big stuff, all the, you know, the swing arm pivot, the engine bolt hangers, you can clean all those up, you can get them vapor blasted, and that's what we did on this case. But all the small bolts for the engine cases and for all the, the chassis and plastic, all that stuff is all new from spec bolt. And that looks really nice when you get this whole thing together. Okay, so one of the other big th components is the swing arm and linkage. And so what we, what, with these bikes, a lot of guys don't realize that most of these swing arms have a clear coat hard an like an anodize on there and so you can't just simply sandblast it you got to get it stripped and so we get, you got to get a dip chemically dipped and stripped and then you can uh, vapor blast it and that's what we did here and so it looks really good and of course we we filed out all the scratches before we had that done and so then when we got it vapor blasted it kind of blended in and of course our stickers covered up well we did the same thing to the linkage and as you can see it came out really good and since we did want to try to keep the costs reasonably down uh, we rebuilt the stock wheels, and I was able to find some, on OfferUp, I found some of these cool yellow rims that are a little bit different than the full gold rims. They're a little bit more yellow to them, and I found some from a guy that was selling some wheels, and these were old. These were in White Brothers boxes, these, oh, wow. these wheels. Yeah, yeah, so that tells you how old these, these rims were, but they were still obviously in great shape, and then we, Sano Metal Finishing, uh, Cerakoted the hubs for us, and then Faster USA built up the wheels, and of course, I mounted up the fresh uh, Pro X sprocket chain and Galfer rotors and Galfer brake lines. Many times the in, in the front we're able to remember how the old Yamahas would run the line underneath, yeah. so you had that longer throw on on all the uh, brake line. So we're able to run a shorter line. Uh, Ride Engineering makes a little piece that holds it to the the front fork. So they that, they made that back in the, in that day in the early 2000s. Adrian had made one of those back then to help these bikes, you know, so you could run that line. So, because I think, you know, Yamaha didn't have the ability to run that line for patent reasons or whatever. So, and then, then the rest of it is cleaning it up more cosmetically. You know, we, we got new plastic from UFO, decal works, graphics, moto seat. We have our uni uh, fil two-stage filter. And with the bars and grips, I really like the Champ Ben from ODI with their uh, V2 lock-on grips. Uh, just got a great feel to them, and I, and I really like those. are a good feel. And, of course, our Dunlop MX-33 tires, right? Okay, something pretty cool too that I just noticed, Jay, is like I haven't seen one of these clamps in years, and it's a Scott's uh, triple clamp. So you guys clean that up, and it looks really nice. I was wondering when I saw that, I was like, what kind of clamp is that? But now that it, that I see it, it comes back, brings back some memories. My dad used to have Scott's clamps on his old desert bikes, and uh, and now you're running solid mounts, and you have works connection bits and pieces on here. So that that's pretty cool. And something that I that I noticed too that I didn't know Decal Works makes frame tape. Yeah, so they just started that actually. So, and we, you know that pattern. That, see how it's not perfect. My wife and I made that pattern. So we actually pattern it out. We get we get out paper, we cut it out, lay it out, and then we send it to them. And they made the pattern for us, which looks really cool. And we had a we had a blue that matched the frame on there originally. And then I go, we need yellow. And my buddy Donnie kind of agreed with me. We want this thing to pop. And so we got yellow on there. The other thing is a plastic skid plate. You know, if you put an aluminum skid plate on these bikes, they're already steel frame bikes got a rigid mount up here, they can resonate and vibrate even more. So we wanted a plastic skid plate on here, and I found one off of the 06 to, to say 22 bikes, the plastic skid plate, and I was able to cut it up, and we made it custom fit. It was really cool. Donnie and I worked on that and got that to fit really nicely. And then for no other reason than it's really cool, we add the light speed cover on here. Obviously not necessary. You can still buy the stock plastic one for a reasonable price. If you wanted a clean one on, on here, you could still do that. Also, if you guys are wondering, too, if you always ask me and you hit me up on my email, chris at keferinktesting.com, FMF makes, obviously, a couple different pipes. There was a gnarly pipe and there's a fatty pipe. So the gnarly pipe's going to give you a little bit more bottom end. It was basically made for off-road riders. It, it, the wall thickness was a little bit different. And the fatty pipe is more mid to top. You still get a little bit more bottom end than your stock muffler, but the gnarly is basically built around for low to mid-range. So... Yeah, so basically what Jay was saying, like, for me, the FMF stuff is really good, but the gnarly pop is more made for off-road riding. This is going to be used primarily on close course, so the fatty and the shorty works really good in that area. And I was a little bit skeptical when Jay said, hey, we're going to make a little yellow motif with this. And I was like, eh, I don't know how that's going to work. But for me, that yellow on the rim is, is, a, is like an old Suzuki-style rim with the factory team did back in the day and then he kind of mated that with the seat and looks really good I've never really seen a yellow 
motif on a blue Yamaha. So kudos to, to you for doing that. And also, when, when Johnny gets on this bike, there's going to be a lot of memories about his dad riding, and he wants to make it look good. And it's, it's, it's a little bit different, obviously, when, when his dad was riding it. But for me, you're connected to your family still. It has a little bit of flair to it. And you never know. You could pass it on to his children. So, I don't know. It's just a cool story. Oh, it, it is. And I, and, and I always joke around that I like to save dirt bikes' lives. And so when these bikes, a lot of times when, when I find these older bikes and their option is to get parted out, or it's, it's kind of fun to save these things and bring them back like this. People see this in my garage, and they're like, this thing's over 20 years old, and they can't believe it. So it's really cool to do. All right, so usually it's about the time when I go ride the bike and tell you about it, but we're going we're gonna to save Johnny's machine right here, and we're not going to go ride this thing. Uh, it's a, obviously in Southern California, everything shuts down, you know, you know, storm watch 2022 out here in Southern California. So Glen Helen, pretty muddy outside right now, so I'm going to spare his bike. Uh, but we're going to go out and start it, give you that nice, crisp, 252 stroke uh, sound. Don't worry, next garage bill we're gonna ride, we're gonna talk more about it, but it's nice to do something different. And for me, this backstory is something special, so um, I don't mind just talking about the bike a little bit more than actually riding it. So for more information on other things, you can go to racerxonline.com. And don't forget, you're on the YouTube channel, you can check everything out we do here. And of course, 12 issues, 30 bucks, the RacerX publication, you can read about things that you don't normally see on the internet. And uh, for me, I'll be back with more testing. Any questions about this bike, chris at keyforinktesting.com. I'm happy to help you guys out, and we'll see you on the next build.